Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to train SVM models, support vector machine models, which are one of the most famous classification algorithms in the area of machine learning. So, in the last video, we have trained KNN classifiers and knife Bayesian classifier. This video is kind of a continuation to that. So, basically, we are going to train SVMs and tune their its hyperparameters on the same data set, which is Amnest. So, what is Amnest data set? For those who haven't watched that video or haven't followed that lab, Amnest is a this data set in which we have eight cross eight images of handwritten data. So that's handwritten numeric numbers are from zero to nine with the with white writing on the black background. So talking about the overall pipeline of a machine learning classification application, it's hardly or majorly the same for majority or almost all of the applications. So let's discuss those. Talking about the first step, we are going to set up the data set, right? And the second step, we split the data set into three chunks that are training, validation and testing. For those who haven't followed the previous lab, Training is the major portion of the data set that is being used for training the classifiers. So talking about the second portion that is validation uh, data set, that is the one on which you tuned your hyperparameters. So the case is that let's say for KNN classifier, you have to find the best value of K, right? So what you do is you randomly choose some value, you train that on a training data set and then you find the performance of that classifier on the validation data set. And once you reach the best value of K, you believe that this is the best performing model, then you take that model and then you test the performance of that model on the last chunk of the data set, which we called as the testing data set. So usually the major portion of the data set is given to training data set. The least portion is given to validation data set and the remaining portion is given to the testing uh, data set, right? After that, the third step is usually extraction of the features or you may say feature engineering, right? For, for the case of computer vision uh, classification problems, it can be finding some features like HOG, finding some feature like uh, SIFT, etc. But for this particular lab, we are going to make use of raw pixel values of the images. Moving towards the fourth step, that is training of the classifier and finding the best hyperparameter. And lastly, we evaluate the best chosen model on the testing data set. So let's move towards the code. So majorly the code part is the same to that of the last video. I'm going to put the link of that video into the description if you are interested in watching that, right? So, uh, but anyhow, I'm going to explain each and every line in this video as well. Okay, so talking about the first step, uh, this line is majorly not related to machine learning part. This is for Python own purpose or own functions. So you don't have to worry about that. Talking about the next line, we are going to print the classification report, which gives us the details of three important validation parameters that includes recall, F1 and precision for each and individual class. So for that, I'm importing classification report utility from sklearn matrices library. Then I'm importing datasets, uh, dataset from sklearn. So datasets is the library from which I'm going to import Amnest. Then the remaining one are majorly the uh, the the helping utilities, which which I'm going to explain later on, but are not directly related to training of classifier or implementation of SVM. Okay, so the, moreover, the next line is so basically, as I mentioned, that we are going to split the data set into three chunks. For doing that, we have a very good utility from SQLearn, and this is uh, its name. That is train underscore test underscore split. And it's a part of model underscore selection library of sklearn. Okay. So to load Amnest dataset, you need to write this line. So you write datasets dot load digits. So you have already imported datasets at this line, right? 
okay so this is uh, so what we are doing in this line so now we are splitting the data set into two chunks so majorly so basically the library which we are using from sklearn splits the data set into two chunks that is which it believes is going to be the training and the testing one okay so we are going to call this library twice or this utility twice to split the data set into three chunks right okay so when we write amnes.data this is this particular part returns us the labels of amnes data set the entire data set and when we write amnes.target this returns us the sorry when we write amnes.data this returns us the images of the entire data set and when we write amnes.target it returns us the labels corresponding to those images okay so what we are doing here is that we are giving it two numpy function to convert that into numpy arrays because this utility works on numpy numbers and luckily as the numbers are in numeric day kind of data there's no need of calling that function that can be called although so uh, so the labels are from 0 to 9 right it is automatically going to be converted into numpy array once we are calling the utility okay so talking about the next parameter so this pa in this parameter we tells us that what is going to be the percentage of the training data set you're going to return so basically it believes that it's going to return the testing and the training part so if it's 0 0.25 that means 75 percent is going to correspond to training 25 is going to correspond to testing talking about the last parameter it's just a random seed you can give any number here so talking about what it actually returns okay so it's going to return so in this first numpy array it's going to return four numpy arrays in the first one is going to return 75 percent of the images converted into numpy arrays okay so images in this case are grayscale images okay grayscale means that intensity values from 0 to 255 are given there. So it's going to be a numpy array having 255 uh, numbers from 0 to 255 and 8 cross 8 kind of array. Okay, so it's going to correspond to the 75% of that data set. And this one corresponds to the labels of those 75% data set images. So obviously, this one corresponds to that remaining 25 percent and this one uh, images and this label corresponds to that labels of that remaining 25 percent images okay the benefit of using this particular utility is that it randomizes the samples while picking the samples for training and testing okay so there is a benefit of doing that which is explained in the last video okay uh, so I briefly explain it. The benefit is that you want your training data to have all kind of samples which may reside in some particular portion of the data set. So if you simply split the data set, let's say if you take the uh, the, the beginning 75% of the portion of the data set for training that may not have some nature kind of data which is residing in the end part of the data set okay so you want the training and the testing part to have all kind of data that is the reason of randomly picking the sample okay so that task is done by this particular utility okay but we don't just want training and testing data set right we want the validation part as well right for that we are calling this per uh, data set again this utility again and in this time we are giving the training part the 75 percent of the data set as an input and we are asking it to have a testing portion of 10 percent that means that the 10 percent of that 75 percent of the training data is now taken as returned as a separate chunk which we are calling as the validation chunk or validation data set so this variable is now going to have the 65 percent of the data images similarly the labels of 65 percent of the data corresponding to those images 10 percent of the data images 
10% of the labels of the data corresponding to those images. <coughs> Excuse me. At this line, these lines, we are printing the length of these data set arrays to just get a check that it the data has actually been split into three chunks. Okay, moving towards the machine learning part. Okay. So as the target of this video is to talk about the implementation stuff, I'm not getting to the details, theoretical details of SVM. I'm just talking about how to implement that. Right. So <clears throat> SVM implementation is there is a part of sklearn. Okay, so this is the way to import that. You write a line, import SVC from sklearn.svm. Okay. And this has two major parameters. The first one is C. So if you have read about SVM, you may know that there is a regularization strength hyperparameter in SVMs. Usually hyphen is used to represent them that in, in literature. The C is actually one over hyphen. That means it's an inversely proportional. It is inversely proportional to that hyphen, that strength of regularization. Then if you have gone through the theoretical details, you may know that we may use kernels for, for SVMs that may improve the performance. So <clears throat> by default, the if you simply call this function like this, it's going to take the value of C as one and kernel is going to be linear, right? And if you pass these parameters, the values you pass will be going to be considered. The target of this lab or the first task of this lab is to tune these two parameters. Okay, and you're talking about the basic implementation. So if we set the value of C to be 0.5, kernel to be linear, we are going to get the object of that model. We call the fit function and give the training data to it to train the model. Then we evaluate the model with the help of score function and give the validation data set as the testing data. The score is going to have the accuracy. We multiply that by 100 and print that. So in this case, I'm going to think around 98% of the classification accuracy. Okay. Now I evaluated the data I found uh, on the test data. I got the prediction corresponding to test entire test data. And here I'm printing the classification report, which I'm getting as a dictionary. Okay. So this is the syntax to, to do that. In the last lab, I mentioned that it's good to print it as a heat map. So if you simply write this line, it's going to generate a very beautifully looking heat map based on the based on the confusion uh, classification report you got here. Okay. So looking at this, we get that that the precision recall and F1 is around 98. All are same. Right. Talking about this portion of the code, you don't need to get into the details of this, right? It is not related to the implementation of SVM or any other classification or machine learning part. It is simply what we are doing in this is, is this is basically to make use and check that whether the, the, the train classifier is working or not. So, so, um, what we are doing here is we are randomly picking five images and then we are making use of the model to predict what is inside the image. Right. So here we have the prediction and here we have the images, right? So we can tell that all the images are, are predicted accurately. Okay. So this is from the last lab. We don't need this. Right. So here is your first task. You have to find the best value or you have to find the best SVM. Okay. You have to change the values of C randomly okay and try it for different kernel options available and find the best performing svm for amnes dataset okay moreover you have to do the same thing for two other data sets as well and the code to import the data sets is already given below right i'm going to put the link to this jupyter notebook inside the description of the video so you can get the entire you can get the entire collab notebook from there that is it for this video 
do give us a, do give us your feedback and do give us a thumbs up if you like the video right and stay tuned we are going to make uh, we regularly make videos on implementation of machine learning related stuff on this channel moreover you can find an entire video series on keras for implementing different kind of neural networks on this channel and various videos on embedded systems and other emerging domains thank you very much for staying tuned allah hafiz